I'd just like to start by saying thank you for inviting me to this conference to speak. Um, just firstly, the, the paper I'm about to present is slightly different. It's slightly different to the others that have been presented in this panel. It's less about the visitors and more about the people and organizations that were involved in the creation of the medieval Jewish trail. So it still has that element of, of people and um, personal contribution. And the history of England's medieval Jews is significant in its own right, and it is vital to the understanding of the political and social history of the country at the time, both locally and nationally. The earliest record of Jews in Winchester dates back to the mid-1100s. This makes it one of the earliest Jewish settlements in England. It was also one of the largest and wealthiest. However, until 2015, there was an almost absolute silence in the public recognition of this important part of local history. It was the creation of the medieval Jewish trail that represented efforts to begin to change this. This paper will discuss the launch of the trail that came about through a local collaboration between the city council, academics, and the contemporary Jewish community. The following will focus on the creation of the project explore the challenges it faced, and conclude with a brief overview of the latest proposals designed to continue efforts to remember Winchester's medieval Jews. As the ancient capital of England, Winchester has an abundance of historical narratives, from the 9th century King Alfred the Great to the 19th century novelist Jane Austen, as well as incorporating a legacy of military and architectural history. These more traditional historical narratives are characteristic of the types of history that have defined the identity of many towns across England, and as a result, they have shaped tourism in cities such as Winchester. The level of visitor choice in the city is high, and this offers an explanation as to why other histories, such as Anglo-Jewish history, have been marginalised. The public representation of Winchester's medieval Jewish history is complicated by the fact that there is little tangible evidence of the community. Two of the locations that might be expected to acknowledge this area of history, the City Museum and the Great Hall, which was part of Winchester Castle, are specifically focused on material sources. Therefore, due to an underrepresentation of this chapter of history in their collections, medieval Jewish history does not feature in their displays. Winchester Cathedral is another site where this period of history might be discussed. However, there's no reference in its in-house leaflets to the clerical relationship with the city's Jews or the images of the patriarchal Jews in the Holy Sepulchre Chapel, for example. As a result, Winchester has become a prominent example of how medieval Jewish history has been omitted from local narratives in cities across England. The Medieval Jewish Trail was launched in 2015 and it's currently the only public-facing recognition of Winchester's medieval Jewish past. The idea for the trail stemmed from my own academic article on the opposing <coughs> approaches of remembering and forgetting medieval juries by York and Winchester, respectfully. The trail was led by a religious studies and death studies scholar named Christina Welch. Having been sent a copy of my article, she contacted a member of the city's contemporary Jewish community and also a prominent local businessman named Danny Habel. Together, they set about forming a collaboration with other academics, students, and local Jews who were, developing in, who were interested in developing a walking tour of the city as a way of publicly acknowledging and providing a connection to Winchester's medieval Jewish past. The project gained the support of Winchester City Council, and as such, the self-guided walking tour was produced to complement the existing suite of tourist guides offered on the history of the city. In addition, this was supported by a University of Winchester webpage on the project, which provides further information for interested visitors. The trail gained some local media attention and the City Council hosted a civil reception for the inaugural walk and this included a guided tour by the official city tour guides. A small number of lectures followed both in Winchester and in Oxford and the local tourist guide training has now been updated to ensure that references to medieval Jewish history are given on even the more generalised tours of the city. As a result of this training, the official city tour guides now also focus on what they've called the city's hidden histories. And so the tour Hidden Religion, Medieval Jewish Winchester, utilises the Jewish trail, as well as the guide's own personal research. The paucity of built heritage and other tangible evidence relating to medieval Winchester's Jews posed a significant challenge. 
primarily because walkers usually expect to be able to see something on a tour. One review of the trail in the Jewish News, for example, notes that the, walker, the walk requires considerable imagination, as only hints of the history can still be seen. This demonstrates the complexities of remembering a materially lost community. With this in mind, the developers of the tour attempted to ensure that the leaflet reader and trail walkers had a focus, and so the trail is a guide to areas where relevant sites are known to have been, whilst telling the story of the community through key characters and events. Alternatively, this makes the tour one of absence, and this has been criticised by some walkers as it's, they found it difficult to engage with the trail. This raises questions such as, is a trail of absence better than no trail at all? The developers assert that remembering Winchester's medieval Jewish community in this way presents the opportunity to recall and populate this aspect of the past. Its significance residing in the fact that the alternative has been to remain silent and for omission to continue. It's important to note that there is one tangible piece of material evidence of the medieval Jewish community in Winchester, a token with a Hebrew inscription discovered in 1968 during excavations in Lower Brook Street. The token is hugely significant, as it is possibly the only one of its kind to have been found in England securely dated before around 1250. Physically, however, it is no larger than a thumbnail, and it's in too poor a condition to be displayed publicly, so we're told. So it's been stored at the Hampshire Archive currently. As a result, it was a key concern of the local Jews involved with the walking tour that the token be made in some way publicly accessible, and so it was given prominent position in the front cover of the medieval Jewish trail. The leaflet features other images of the medieval Jewish site as they are today. However, imagery, re imagery relating directly to Winchester's medieval Jews simply doesn't exist. And so an artist was employed to produce representations of images such as the yellow badge that Jews were required to wear from 1253, as well as some gallows, a stone house, and others. The cost of this was, however, supplementary, and so it was paid for by the local Jew previously mentioned, Danny Habel. The contribution was honoured through the dedication of the tour to Danny's parents, Jack and Gretel Habel, who were refugees of the Holocaust. This gives participants of the tour a modern point of reference, which in turn encourages connections to be made between the medieval and contemporary Jewish communities. One local member of the Jewish community noted it was her hope that in addition, the production of the walking tour would contribute towards battling anti-Semitic attitudes in the city today. Welch describes the tour as an introduction to both medieval Jewish history as well as key locations in the city through a focus on key individuals. Every Jew who is mentioned in medieval records in Winchester is mentioned by name in the tour. The concentration on individuals was incorporated to uphold the requests of the local Winchester Jews to include positive histories as well as negative ones. This was due to a feeling they had that especially in the area of public engagement, much of the Jewish experience can be lost when only one side of history is portrayed through a, neg a narrative of persecution. However, subsequent feedback from one member of the community also demonstrates that the restricted word count of just 1,000 <coughs> words may have impacted on the effectiveness of this approach. This, they stated that the walking tour creates the perception that, quote, the Jews of Winchester were mainly a bunch of usurers and criminals, and this is not a fair reflection, end quote. This criticism arises in part from the differing responses to point seven on the tour, which notes the execution of Abraham Pinch for theft. However, it fails to note that these were in fact spurious charges as a result of failing to condemn him for the murder of a child. The trail highlights that Pinch was buried beneath the gallows in the street that the audience is currently standing in. This emphasis on death and suffering in this way echoes an approach that acknowledges the increasing popularity amongst tourism of what is known as dark tourism. Developers state that they acknowledge this because the tour had to be engaging and catch the attention of participants of the tour, noting that as a result, compromises had to be made and therefore there was more focus on Abraham Pinch than initially desired. Further, the tour is problematic in that some important background information has been consigned to the supplementary literature on the project's website. This is due to the aforementioned restricted word count. 
further reading enlightens the reader to the often fictitious and exaggerated nature of allegations made against Jews such as Pinch and others mentioned in historical records. However, negative feedback and suggestions for improvements to the trail also demonstrate the unique and ongoing nature of the trail project, as future reprints of the tour leaflet will include adjustments that account for concerns raised as far as possible. However, restrictions such as the word count will obviously still remain. A further challenge to the representation of medieval Jews in the city was identified following a special guided version of the trail at the Heritage and its Communities Conference in Southampton last year. The trail was largely well received. However, one criticism noted that a more thematic approach may have been more successful. For example, if identified with one individual named Licaricia, a prominent medieval Jewish female moneylender, Tourists through this may have gained greater insight into medieval everyday life as well as the Winchester medieval Jewry. However, due to a lack of source material about Licaricia, a walk of this nature would be focused around educated guesses rather than known facts, even given the comprehensive publication seen here by Suzanne Bartlett in 2009. This is largely due to the fact that much of the source material about medieval Anglo Jewry <coughs> is based on financial transactions and court records. Thus, much of the human dimension or everyday life of Anglo-Jewish life in England is missing. Therefore, information required for an historically accurate walking tour, such as the location of where Licaricia was born, where she lived and died, remains unknown, thus severely restricting the possibility of creating a form of public engagement that focus pure, focuses purely on her. So what's next? The head of tourism for Winchester City Council has stated the city's Jewish history had not been previously incorporated into the heritage information simply because no one had asked for it. Although feedback from the general public to the city tour office about the trail indicates that local residents and tourists alike often didn't know that there was a medieval Jewish history in the city to know about. This highlights the significance of the trail and also raises questions to do with responsibility and ownership, which I don't have time to go into here. Overall, the trail has been viewed as a success by the city council, and as a result, they continue to develop the city's representations of medieval Jewish history. However, there are challenges which may or may not be resolved over time. For example, there are plans to install a series of historical information posts and this will include one with an overview of medieval Jewish history of Winchester. However, this project's currently stalled by council policies on signage, and these are still under review. Other developments include a timeline of Winchester's medieval Jewish history, currently being developed as part of the new designs for Winchester's tourism website. And there are also forthcoming publications that are expected to mention Winchester's Jewry due for publication in the next year or two. To conclude, the obstacles of remembering medieval Jewish history in the case study of Winchester are primarily focused on the absence of a built or tangible heritage. As a result, the museum and heritage sites maintain the silence around its medieval Jewish history that has historically characterized this city's approach. Thus, the long-term incorporation of Winchester's medieval Jews into the public history of the city is still a way off. The recent change in approach seen elsewhere in the form of the medieval Jewish trail was spearheaded by academics and also the local Jewish community. The role of the Winchester City Council here has been integral in demonstrating that for Winchester at least, a collaborative effort was what was needed to instigate change from forgetting towards remembering the city's medieval Jews. The permanence of this new approach may very well depend on further such efforts. Thank you.